I think when you say Kauffman Stadium, everybody knows baseball is played there. You say the Kauffman Center for the Performing Arts, great uh, music and, and symphonies and ballet. You say the Kauffman Foundation to people. I think it's almost good to do a little uh, just reminiscing here about how the Kauffman Foundation came to be and why it's so important to Kansas City this many years down the road. Thoughts on that? It's a great question, and it's one that all of us who are involved love to talk about because it gives us a chance to talk about Mr. Kaufman. And his passion for this community uh, is well chronicled. I mean, you mentioned a few of the things that his legacy has made possible. We care deeply about education for disadvantaged youth, thus Kaufman Scholars, and what we're doing with the charter school and other educational support. But he also left a real challenge to those that he entrusted with the foundation on entrepreneurship. What can we do as a foundation to begin to help people who have that fire, if you will, to create a business, uh, to be part of the American dream, to help them be as successful as he can, as they can. Do you find those two go hand in hand oh, and, and sync up really well? I was just saying, operationally, we obviously have things like the charter school, which is a school that, that we run. We're into our second year now. Up to a couple hundred students will be adding a, a grade next year. Uh, occupying our, our new facility uh, over at uh, uh, Paseo and, and Meyer. But if you step back, what Mr. Kaufman viewed both of these uh, activities uh, supporting was to have people become self-sufficient, independent contributors, not only you know to their own family and, and their economic welfare, but contributors back to the community and society as a whole. And to achieve that, uh, obviously one direction is a, is a quality education that, that prepares somebody, some pop part of the population, to you know, just participate in, in uh, jobs and so forth. But also there's a subset of that that, that would benefit the whole community by starting uh, new businesses, keeping you know, the vibrance of the economy going. So they're, they're really you know, run hand in hand. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily see that initially from the way the programs are set up, but both the educational content and the entrepreneur go back and forth all the time. And, and there's always an opportunity in any endeavor to, let's, let's just call it an entrepreneurial approach, to find a better way to do things. And we attempt to do that on the educational side also. You're, you're both not unfamiliar with the operation. Uh, you actually, Jan is taking this, the chair uh, that you've been occupying for a number of years while you move into uh, in, into the president and CEO role. Are the things that have been going on the right things? Or are you starting to go well now that we're in these positions? We're going to shift things in any particular way. Focus is changing at all. Well, I, obviously the two missions we've been working on for some time. And uh, at least m my view is that, that there's not a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed, so to speak. Uh, I think one of the things that we will both work on is getting more visibility of what we do to the Kansas City community, because I think to, to some degree that's uh, under-recognized, uh, and so that's important. Uh, if you looked at the two sides, uh, on the education side, and we all talk a lot about that in Kansas City because of some of the unique challenges we have here, you know, quite frankly, there's a lot of very solid, proven educational programs that we have found uh, around the country, in some cases that we have worked on on ourselves. Uh, there's more solutions to education than there are acceptance of the solutions. Uh, there's still experimentation to be done, but in many cases it's getting a, a, a district or a community to accept the solutions and you know there's always the issues there that one deals with because of the structure of those. On the uh, entrepreneurial side it's about the reverse. A lot of it's very experimental or you know how do we find the right answer there. Do you find it fun to be around these entrepreneurs uh, as you, you know, in, I know there's weekends spent with them sometimes you guys put on any number of different programs. Does, does it, it excite is, yes. you to have well, some of that going oh, on? Oh absolutely. Not only their energy but their willingness to embrace new ideas and bring them, and if you will, put their own skin hmm. in the game to, to make them work. But I would also say that same kind of commitment to things that work is going on in the education area. And uh, Kaufman Scholars is a great hmm. example of our commitment 
to taking what we've learned to avail ourselves to the proven solutions on helping students that are falling behind in reading, for example, in math. How do we integrate that now and effectively move these students along effectively at a greater speed? So. Uh, we're focused, I think, and uh, very committed now to some results that we can talk about in the community and also share nationally where it's appropriate. Speaking of sharing nationally, a um, documentary uh, that I think uh, you all have been fairly familiar with that uh, is going to be airing across the country on public television stations, Something Ventured is a, a, a way that you have helped participate in getting the word out about entrepreneurial spirits and the, the notion of venture capital. We wanted to share a quick oh, great. quick clip with people that I think shows you what a, a fun topic this can be. Why don't you take a look? We didn't know what we were doing. Silicon Valley. Technical breakthrough. $100,000. $10 billion. Dollars. Intel. Apple. Genentech. Cisco. Good markets. Great companies. Rolling companies. Guys, limit. The rest is history. The company was started with $250, and so we never had any money. But you have to be brave. These are very fragile companies with a lot of things missing. Any new business seldom does what's written in the business plan. The risks were just enormous. You could walk down the street in 1976 and talk to 100 people and say, would you like a personal computer? And they go, well, what's that? Jobs and Wozniak came up to see me, and they were very unappealing. They were bearded. They didn't smell good. They dressed funny. Yeah, well. But Woz had designed a really wonderful computer. I was convinced it was a big market just embryonically beginning. And when you see it, you know it. It's just that just goes right through your bones. Something Ventured, a documentary here on public television and Kauffman Foundation uh, among the sponsors that made that possible to get distributed to the country. So we thank you for that. Uh, I want to say, Tom, DST Systems, from which you came, was, I think, around in the 1970s at that time when those personal computers were such a new thing. Has, has that experience that you brought from, you know, bringing a company uh, through all those decades uh, really prepared you for the, the job you're about to take? Well, I hate to say it's totally prepared me, but I think it was a great experience for me. Uh, in that period, DST was really started as part of Kansas City Southern in 1969. And uh, well, I specifically remember when we started looking at PCs and, you know, should we have them on the desktops of the assistants and so forth. Uh, at that point, you could have had your choice of a uh, PC uh, or a Miata for the same price. Uh, you know, they were about uh, $13,000 when the first ones rolled out, like, you know, most technology waves. I think what you learn in, in businesses that have a technology uh, component to them is you pretty much have to reinvent them at a much more rapid rate. This isn't necessarily like you know a major manufacturing business where the product has longer term durability, because it is you know is well represented in that video. Which, by the way, is a, a great. Uh, uh, expression of the type of partnership we like to do with KCPT and others because the, um, the, the film was actually produced elsewhere, but we supported the, the dissemination of it, the broadcast of it. But you know, going back, you know, when you look at the rate of change, that's one of the things that's really particularly important. And, and uh, having dealt with that, I think that, that helps a lot in coming into a coffin where you have extremely bright people and a lot of challenges that, that require a, a rapid adaptation. <laughs> We'd like to let you get back to you know the things that you need to be doing, but it's uh, it's great to have it's kind of the new blood here that's not brand new, but is changing changing some shape over at the Kaufman Foundation and the chance to kind of understand where all this is going with you. It's a pleasure to have. Well, thank it's great to be here, and we really want to thank uh, KCPT for the way you support our community and highlight the things that are making a difference. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you.